So as we dive into our statistical class, uh, we need to be able to define some basic vocab so that we can be kind of on the same page as we're talking about things. All right, so let's go ahead and discuss some just basic vocab. Okay, so here's what we're talking about. Uh, and we heard a little bit about it in some of the previous videos, but let's talk about what the population is. So in the broadest strokes, our population is the group of interests that we want to make some conclusion or study about. Uh, so we'll just put that up as group of interest. And this can really be anything. I mean, maybe we're studying, uh, I don't know, asteroids in the asteroid belt. Uh, maybe we are studying uh, people's reaction when they eat jalapenos. Uh, it can be anything, but it has to be about this specific group. Now, the population can be really kind of as big or as narrow as we want it to be, but we need to be able to define it. So, for example, maybe I am I'm, I have this question, and I want to know um, if uh, if people watch maybe like a scary video clip, uh, what happens to their eyes? Like, do their eyes dilate? And maybe I'm trying to find some correlation to I don't know some biological process, but maybe that, that that's what I'm looking at. Now, if I just ask like how do people's eyes dilate when they watch a scary video, my population is all people, like everybody around the globe. Now, I could narrow it down. Maybe I'm just interested in a specific age group. Maybe my, uh, I'm interested in how teenagers, so maybe from 13 to 19, uh, respond when they see a scary video, what happens with their eyes. Now, if, instead of being everybody in the whole entire world, I've narrowed down my population to just teenagers. Um, or maybe I'm just interested in teenagers in the United States and I've narrowed my population down. Whatever our population is, it really doesn't matter what it is, but we need to be able to be sure that we can define exactly what the population is so that when we make our conclusions down the road that we are making conclusions about the correct group. What happens sometimes is we maybe our study of our population really was only about these teenagers, but we erroneously make a conclusion about all people when really our population of interest was really just teenagers. So anyhow, population in general terms is just our group of interest. Okay, so from our population we have, uh, after we gather the, some data, if we were to go and look at every single person in the population. So let's take this example with our videos and eye dilations. If we were to go to every teenager in the entire world show them the exact same video, watch their eyes dilate, uh, we could then make some, um, we could find out, you know, maybe the average length that their eyes dilate, and that would be a parameter. And we can kind of call this, is this is a truth about the population. Now you might have uh, thought to yourself like, whoa, that's gonna be really hard to do. How many teenagers are there in the entire world? Well, you know, if you do a quick calculation, maybe say that, okay, there's like six billion, seven billion people in the entire world. Uh, maybe we'll say that a sixth of them lie within the teenager years, you know, roughly a billion people. Like that would be really hard to do uh, to actually figure out what this parameter is. Uh, so what we do instead a lot of times is we try to take what's called a sample. And just in basic terms, the sample is a subset of the population. Okay, so if we were interested in these teenagers throughout the whole globe, maybe we could be able, instead of sampling every single teenager in the entire world, maybe we take uh, and we try to get a random sample that would be representative of the entire population. So sample is a subset of the population, but a really good sample is a representative. A 
we want it not only to be a subset, but also a representative subset. So the, let me explain. A subset of our population, uh, if maybe we were just doing it of the teenagers, maybe we would just look at teenagers in the United States. Well, if we did that, yes, it's a subset of the population, but really our population just got narrowed down. Our representative sample would just be of the population of teenagers in the United States. So if we wanted this to be a representative of the teenagers of the entire world, we'd want to make sure that the people that we sampled came from many different countries, many different cultures, and try to get a representative subset uh, of the population. Uh, that is not always an easy thing to do, and we'll talk about some of the ways and the techniques that you can go about getting a representative sample. Okay, so just like how the parameter was some truth about the population, we, after we gather our sample and we, you know, figure out, we measure their eye dilation, what that would be of the sample is a statistic. Or we could say some truth about And we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, how the statistics kind of breaks up into two different types of statistics. Uh, but yeah, the statistics really is just a truth uh, about the sample. Okay, so that's kind of like talking about our population, and our samples, parameters, and statistics. And now we're going to go and talk just a little bit about, okay, what is it, what is it called when we actually like um, give a survey to somebody and we ask them all those questions or if we actually measure you know the dilation of somebody's eye that is specifically called a variable okay so the variable is simply what we measure or observe What we measure or observe. So in that one, it would be you know the eye dilation. Maybe if we were just taking a survey about somebody's favorite ice cream flavor, uh, that'd be more of just like an observation. But the variable is what we measure or what we observe. Okay, and then finally, one more uh, one more line is data. So the data is the compilation of the responses of this variable that we're measuring from our sample. So I'm just going to simplify that down. So this is going to be like a list of, we'll do results from sample. Whew. Okay, so that is our basic vocabulary. We're going to do just a quick explanation or expansion on the statistic one because there are really two different types of statistics that, that we talk about. So let's put it up here. We have two types. The first type is just descriptive. Now descriptive statistics are just the truth about the sample. So maybe we just took the sample of 50 teenagers, we showed them this video and we measured their eye dilation. So the descriptive uh, statistic, this is just exactly our like results from sample. Uh, and like an example would be like uh, the sample mean. There are other statistics that we can talk about, means, medians, we can talk about proportions, um, but let's just talk about like the sample mean. So we took those 50 people and we, uh, those 50 teenagers, we showed them the video and from there we were able to say this is what their, um, their sample mean of how much their eyes dilated after watching this scary video. Okay, so that's descriptive and descriptive statistics are useful, but what eventually we want to do is get to inferential. Inferential statistics. Now, what an inferential statistic is, is we take this statistic um, and this results from the sample and we make a conclusion 
about the population. And there are some rules that we need to follow in order to be able to make an inferential statistic, but it's, we'll do, we'll say it like this, results, results from sample, making conclusion, making a conclusion about the population. And if you think about it, that's really powerful because in order to, um, in order to find this parameter or some truth about the population, uh, in order to get it perfectly, we would have to go and sample or look at and measure every single person in the population. But this class is going to show us how we can take our sample, which is a subset of the population, and how we can make these inferential statistics and where from this sample we can make a conclusion instead not just about the, the sample, but we can in fact make conclusions about the population or where we can use our statistics to approximate our parameters.